Cuba's revolutionary leaders loomed large in Abraham Jimenez and Noah's life. His grandfather was Fidel Castro's bodyguard, and gifts from Che Guevara filled his grandparents' home. Che was my grandfather's best man at his wedding, and he gave them a wedding present, a television set. There are pictures of Che in the house having a mojito. But a career in journalism forced Jimenez and Noah to leave his revolutionary roots behind. In 2016, he founded the independent magazine El Estornudo, or The Sneeze. We wrote about prostitution, the opposition, human rights. This is what provoked the government to start the bullying and repression. That harassment grew in 2019, when he took on a new role, columnist for the Washington Post. On one occasion, they arrested me. They handcuffed me and took me to the police station with my head bowed. They strip-searched me. Then they secretly filmed me and put my image on television, claiming I was a CIA spy. Members of Jimenez and Noah's family, including his father, a lieutenant colonel in the Ministry of the Interior, were forced to leave their jobs. Then, in November 2021, came the ultimatum. La última vez. The government called me by telephone and told me I had to leave the country or they would put me in prison and create problems for my family. In January, he moved to Barcelona, Spain with his wife and two-year-old son. In doing so, he became part of a growing band of independent voices forced out of Cuba. The risks of being an independent journalist in Cuba prompted Wendy Lascano Exposito to move to Madrid in 2013. They can indict you, they can put you in prison arbitrarily, take away your means of working, your computer, camera, they can cut the internet, they can bug your telephone, convert you into a marginal figure. Family and friends might want to turn their backs on you. Pressure on the island's few independent voices ramped up in 2021 after mass anti-government protests. As of September 29, seven journalists were imprisoned and a further four were deprived of their liberty outside jail, says Prisoners Defenders, a Madrid-based nonprofit focused on human rights in Cuba. Neither Havana's International Press Center nor the Cuban Embassy in Madrid responded to a request for comment from VOA. But outside Cuba, journalists can find more freedom. Diario de Cuba uses contacts on the island to report on topics often not covered in state media, such as arbitrary detentions, political prisoners, and domestic violence. Many times we get more information from outside Cuba than you can inside because we have the internet, and there they have censorship. Jimenez Enoa, who in November will be honored with an International Press Freedom Award from the Committee to Protect Journalists, is making amends with family back home, but finding it hard to adjust to life in Spain. I had never left Cuba. It feels like a difficult world. I must live in capitalism. Also, I am black. There is a lot of racism. In a shop, there are 17 cheeses, 14 yogurts, and all the types of products you can imagine. To have all these in Cuba would be a privilege. Despite the sacrifices, he has no regrets. I asked myself if this repression was affecting my loved ones. I felt guilty, but I carried on relating the truth because the government was carrying out this repression. And exiled from his native land, he continues to do so as he grows accustomed to a strange new world in Spain. For Graham Keeley in Barcelona, Spain, Miguel Amaya, VOA News.